Welcome back, dear viewers. Hope you've had a nice little short break and had a cup of tea. Um, the daily duas are very refreshing. Um, and so now we're going to talk um, more with our specialist, um, it's Brother Bilal Ali. I was going to call you doctor there, but um, <laughs> Brother Bilal Ali, thank you so much for joining us. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam How are you doing this morning? Alhamdulillah, I'm well. I'm well. Good, good, good. Um, so this, mo this morning's topic we're going to discuss about is our relationship with food and how it affects our mood. Um, the benefits of sort of giving ourselves a positive image towards it, you know, our attitude mm -hmm. towards it, um, the, you know, and how it, it will perhaps pick us up or it can even do the opposite effect, can't it? Mm -hmm. um, so what is your sort of, I mean, in your experience um, in this field, um, your various courses you've done, what would you say is the most, I think, concerning issue mm -hmm. that we have in, in this current era about, you know, towards food? Because we have such a growth in processed food, haven't we now? Yeah, and and yeah. Um, pesticides with fruits and there are all sorts. So what would be your sort of most concerning? It's funny because um, as much as my, um, my experiences in my clinic and, and on the mental health circuit, um, I'm still always informed by the uh, saying of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, about, um, you know, being aware of, of your intake of food because many diseases or many illnesses, mm. something along this line, mm. you know, start from the stomach. And um, it's quite profound, not just the physical, but even the psychological plays mm. up or manifests itself in terms of people's diet. So a lot of overeating, um, obesity, and people's unhealthy relationships with food are oftentimes a manifestation of a psychological problem. Comfort eating, eating to cope, eating beyond, um, you know, the mm. nece the, what's necessary uh, is really what we're talking about. Do you think, so, so, you know, a lot of us on a Friday night, oh, I just want pizza, I just want something, you know, just a downtime before we're eating healthy in the week and just want mm -hmm. something. Is that is that quite detrimental to our physical health or is one-off sort of having a treat where we see a treat as something that's high in fat, processed, mm -hmm. you know, is that, is that quite a negative thing on? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say so. As I, as I said, I'm not a, I'm not a dietitian, but I'm a qualified personal trainer and I do have weight loss management um, knowledge or yeah. experience or qualification so to speak um and so you know the occasional break from the the, the healthy regime is is not gonna it's cause not gonna any, any major problems it's when that when there isn't a break because it's not a break away from a healthy diet but it's more like oh, i had something healthy today as a one-off right. and but the other meals throughout the week are yeah. the more unhealthy more high in sugar, low in nutritional value, low in micro um, and macronutrients, that's when, that's when we're getting into right, more so problems. Right, it's, so it's, it's the relationship we have with yeah, food. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it can be under eating as well, you know, there's, there's a variety of um, ways that we can, you know, yeah. our, our, what's going on on a psychological level can play out on our plate, if I can put it that way. So what would, so let's look into um, what would be a healthy relationship with food? That what we, you know, we've all been raised in different ways from yeah. different, you know, parents from all over the world, mm -hmm. um, and and that becomes our habit. Um, yes. So what we've seen in our children, what we've been growing up with, mm -hmm. and then what's perhaps sort of the extremes. Um, so I was just thinking more of, you know, anorexia, bulimia. They're all relationships of food, and mm -hmm. how does that tie in? So if we start with sort of a healthy attitude towards food, what would you say? What does and like you said, it's an interesting point that mm -hmm. oh, I've been I've been good, so I'm going to treat myself. But then it's when you know if that good becomes. Mm -hmm. So to just the minority, it needs to be a regular thing, doesn't it? Yeah, well, the, 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 essentially we need um, fats, a certain portion of fats, say like a, a minority of fats. There's a, oh my gosh, there's a, such a big debate about how much fats is healthy yeah. for us, but fats are healthy in terms of um, your, your non-processed. So, you know, there's an obsession to cut the fat off the chicken and take the skin yeah. off and all things of this nature. But, you know, more a more recent scientific breakthroughs are showing that you know our bodies process that type of those type of fats um you know we've been doing it for millennia right. and so you know we're, we're able to do that without there being a problem the, the the um some of the issues that came up in the in the in the food game if i can put it like that is that there was this thing about fats being the devil fats yeah. were evil fats were yeah. terrible so everything became low fat but to make the food have flavor and have body yeah. they had to pump it with um Carbs now, if you carbohydrates now, if you don't use if you don't use up a certain amount of carbohydrates, what happens is your body um, it turns into glucose, sugar. Your body stores it, and that's where the yeah. obesity, um, you know, yeah. has has gone has gone through the roof. So, a healthy relationship with food is more to do with eating natural foods as much as possible. Um, you know, your so vegetables. Which oils, which oils would you recommend? 
Um, olive oils, olive coconut oils, oils are okay. highly recommended. Um, there are some oils that are healthy if you drizzle them on your food, vegetable right. oils, um, for example. Okay. But it's um, sunflower oil. But it's when you fry with particular oils, right. um, they say that there's a kind of carcinogenic or cancer-causing agent. They change, they transform them, the heat transforms them. So coconut oil is not is is one of the most, um, let's say, uh, preferable oils to, to cook. Right. You, to use to actually fry with that it doesn't cause it doesn't have mm. that effect it doesn't change its its configuration chemically okay. um, in that negative way and so when so in terms of a balanced diet you have yeah. sort of a healthy relationship with food would be to eat more natural not the processed foods because we have a lot of e less, in our less food. process is better mm -hmm. um, you know a healthy portion of carbohydrates preferably like your brown rice or, but you know rice in general but you know your, your, say for example your, um, brown rice pasta um, or even even bread, even even but whole meal is is, yeah. is always going to be better. Um, so a certain amount of carbohydrate, starch in your foods, sweet potatoes, things like this. Then a portion of meat or fish, if that's your preference. If you're vegan, you can still get a, yeah. you know healthy intake of protein through um, your pulses, your chickpeas, yeah. your you know. Um, and the, and the like and so you got your so you got your protein you got a healthy portion of of carbohydrates and also um, fats as well if you're not animal fats are fine um, cream milk uh, or even if you're you know, vegan or more you know you eat less meat then you know things like avocados and nuts mm. hazelnuts walnuts whatever are they all quite healthy to sort of feed children and sort of develop that healthy attitude towards food from a young age is that advisable be yes, because the biggest relationship the, or the biggest issue is is a is a psychological element. Mm. You know, in terms of our relationship with the fridge, and mm. do we eat out of comfort? Do we eat out mm. of boredom? Do we mm. eat out of you know being habitual? Um, do we not eat out of there being a psychological problem? Because we we um, I don't know if we mentioned um, anorexia mm -hmm. or bulimia. Like say for example, these are um, psychological conditions. You know, and they're often triggered by trauma. Right. Or 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 or, or no, una being unable to cope with certain major life events. Sometimes people have been a victim of victims of abuse, yeah. or there's a, a some type of self-loathing taking place. Something may have happened to a, um, a person where they felt like they were in a situation where they didn't have any control. Yes. So by them being very particular about their food, that gives them what the they control. eat, when they eat, how much they eat. Yeah. Um, that's them regaining control over themselves. Or it might be because they are self-loathing, they feel unworthy. So yeah. it's about them being punitive with themselves. Um, are, they, are they finding themselves um, having to mislead others? But children are known for this because it's, you know, yeah. it kind of develops um, kind of in early puberty for some people around that age. Um, our, our, our teachers and caregivers and people who, who, you know, guardians are aware that children may try and avoid, you know, did you eat your dinner and, yeah. they, you know, throwing food away yeah. or there's, yeah, I had something earlier on and, you know, yeah. this type of thing. It's not, not as straight away if a child's done that, it means I'm not suggesting that's a diagnosis, but mm. these little telltale signs of them avoiding food, avoid eating with others, mm. avoiding maybe sharing for everybody. It's different culturally, you know, the etiquette of yeah. giving others first, but when, when you notice that person isn't eating at all and, you know, are they a bit, do they appear a little bit underweight? Are they you know, con trying to conceal yeah. and be deceptive about, about their, their, their problematic relationship. Um, bulimia is more to do with um, eating, but then purging, right. um, in inducing, you know, vomiting yeah. to, bring, to bring the food back up. And, um, you know, the irony is that it doesn't necessarily work anyway, because you know, once you've consumed the food, the, 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 those nutrients have now kind of entered into the, into the system. So um, it doesn't so always work. They can cause, yeah, it can cause these ulcers in the stomach and different yeah. and problems. I mean, and people can actually die f um, from anorexia yeah. as they can die from obesity. Yeah. You know, two different, two different extremes, but in terms of unhealthy relationships. But there's usually, essentially, telling us something. These are like symptoms of, this is like the iceberg that we see, yeah. but there's a deeper psychological, emotional problem under the surface that needs to be Address so try to not chastise or be punitive towards that person. Who I mean, has it, that it problem. could be if it's somebody themselves that they're yeah. going through something like this. Yeah. Is it something? It's a parent that recognises it in their child or siblings, whoever we recognise, friends. What would be as as a practitioner? What would you advise people to what to do with that situation with, with a person that they may 
recognise have, mm -hmm. have has certain unhealthy attitude towards food. I'd, I'd say there's various national mental health charities that are online that have websites with a lot of information. For right. example, Mind is a national charity. They okay. have very credible um, information online about things of this nature. You can always go on the NHS website. Um, but if you go online, you, there's, um, like I said, organisations where you can call up and speak to somebody to get further mm -hmm. advice. Because it's one thing reading an article, it'll yes. put you in the know or watching a, you know, a short YouTube video on the NHS website. So that'll give you some basic understanding, but yeah. you may want to phone a number and speak to somebody. And there are people available. Yeah, exactly. There are people that you can speak to to say, I have this concern about this particular Excellent. family yeah. member. Yeah. And how can I um, move this, this, yeah. this forward? How can I, I kind of get them um, help? Because I think one of the one of the things that people wouldn't want to do is become highly emotive and you know panic or cause more distress to the person that perhaps already is suffering in some sort of capacity that's causing this sort of mm -hmm. neg mm -hmm. in unhealthy relationship and you wouldn't want to say the wrong thing to yeah. trigger anything else in them. So um, so that's really helpful to know about sort of helplines that um, can actually guide you how best to you know yeah. what next steps to take and everything. So are there any final points you'd like to? Yeah, I would say if you have if you have concerns, well, people oftentimes people are aware aware about themselves in terms of their their, their relationship um, with food and you know their food addiction, and um, you know there's nothing that can beat natural foods, and that you know as, 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 as we hear all the time that we should avoid these. Um, foods, processed foods that are high in sugar. Yeah. And this is, everybody wants a biscuit, a bit of chocolate. There's yeah. no problem, but, you know, avoiding that, that being the mainstay or, or, or the bigger portion of your, your, your daily food intake is from these foods that are high in sugars that causes these rushes and these highs of energy and whatever. And then these, but then these crashes, because then it is like a kind of a addiction, like, yeah. like with these other nefarious substances, but, in a, yeah. in a, in a, you know, it plays out in that kind of way. And any final points about e-numbers and things like that that are present in our food and sort of... Um, any concerns about those about the effect of the chemicals in our body? Well, um, we were speaking about earlier, you know, the, there is an actual um, crisp that is on, on sale in the high street that has a particular chemical in it that lights up various um, neurons and has a particular effect on our brain activity. Mm -hmm. And it does induce an addictive or compulsive behavioural trait with that crisp. So it's like once you have one, you feel like you need another and another. And Subhanallah. it's actually something. So we need. I think we need to do some. Um, we need a. We need a Muslim organisation to commission some research. Like what a beautiful dawah could that be if we were to research some of these e numbers and maybe produce some. The some, effects uh, of some, it. Yeah, produce some information about the, yeah. the, the, the inherent dangers in some of these products. Um, chemicals in a processed yeah. food. I mean, imagine that, you know, we freely hand these out to young people and children saying, oh, just have a crisp or just have this and you don't know what you're feeding them. So, yeah. you know, it's always better to be na natural, isn't it? And, yeah. you know, isn't it something to say that though? It's, it's not just halal, but they say, tell you a bit that the food must be pure, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So there's food that isn't got anything haram in it necessarily, yeah. but, but it it's not pure harmful. food. Yeah. yeah. It's saturated yeah. or, you know, low in nutritional value. And it's always the most delicious, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much once again. Um, we've come to the end of um, that, that's morning's, this morning's segment. Um, so inshallah you have a blessed day and uh, we'll hope, look forward to seeing you in our next morning episode of The Specialist. Um, and so inshallah. next up we are going to be joined by Fahima and Sana and I'm looking forward to what they're going to be making for us over to the kitchen.